All right, folks, welcome back. So if you recall from our previous session here, we uh, managed to determine the equation of a circle here, and we know that it's in a nice form here. For something like this, for instance, if we have, we want to find the radius in the center of this particular circle with this equation here, we recall that the, uh, the two most important pieces of information are already encoded in here. This, if you recall, this is our radius squared, and this is the center. So remember that the center here is going to be the reverse of the coordinates here, so it would make sense that our center is going to be at 7, comma, negative 5. Remember we have to reverse the coordinates here, because again, with the distance formula, we have subtraction here. And our radius here is going to be the square root of 32, which is in this case uh, 4 radical 2 here. So that means this is enough for us to draw what the circle looks like here. Now, that's all fine and dandy, of course, but then again, there may be situations where it may not be nice and uh, nice and clean here. As you can see, all this information is you know, put together in a nice little, uh, very neat boxes here, right? We have a box for the x, a box for the y, and a radius squared. And then things like this come along. Oh, crap. Where are the boxes? It looks like somebody's gone in and torn apart our boxes and thrown everything everywhere. So here, this is significantly more difficult to determine what the radius and center of this circle is because it looks nothing like what we want, right? We want it to look like that. So our eventual goal, so let's think of it this way. Our goal is we want it to look like this, x minus something squared plus y minus something squared. Now, it could be a plus, and then we want another something squared at the end here. We want to fill in these spaces with the proper things here. Of course, we can't just fill them in willy-nilly here because this might not be uh, equivalent to that here. So just like any other good detective here or any sort of crime drama maybe you've watched, you want to look for clues. So we note that we have an x squared, and that does come out of this here. We know we have a y squared that comes out of this here as well. So we note that there's a lot of good information here with this and this here. Okay. Now there's a minus 5 over here, so technically this minus 5 should probably be pushed to the right-hand side. So we're going to move the minus 5 over here and make it a plus 5. Okay. So that now turns the equation to x squared minus 2x plus y squared plus 6y equals 5, right? So that's what we've done here. We transformed the equation. We want it to look like this here. So what now? I guess if we want to determine what's going on here, let's take a look at this a little bit more. So I'm going to do some experimentation here. Now, as I'm sure you all recall from Algebra 1, if we do something, oops, if we do something like this, x minus 4 squared, right? That's really x minus 4 times x minus 4 here. Now, please, please do not tell me that it's just x squared plus 16 because you're not, because there's things missing. Trust me, your algebra teacher will thank you for this. Note that in this situation, yes, there's going to be an x squared term if we do a distribution. There is going to be an x squared term. There's going to be a positive 16 here, but there's also going to be other stuff as well, right? So, for instance, if we put this x in, we have x times x that gives us x squared, but we also have an x times a negative 4, which gives us a minus 4x here. Similarly, we have a negative 4 times x, that gives us another minus 4x here, and we have negative 4 times negative 4, which is a positive 16, and that yields us x squared minus 8x plus 16. So we know that this is equal to x minus 4 squared. Now, if you're particularly a student in Algebra 1, this isn't going to be particularly helpful here because I think you're going to be able to recognize what's going on here. Let's try something else here, okay? We're going to say x plus some constant c squared, okay? So note that c here, in this case, is going to be some constant. Now, in much the same way, we can go ahead and write this one out, x plus c times x plus c, right? And again, we have this here. So we can just distribute x squared plus cx for the out, for these two terms. For, uh, we have this times this, and then the c times each of these, so we have a cx as well, and a c squared. So that yields you x squared plus su cx plus c squared. Now remember that c was the constant here. So notice how this is our constant, but it's that squared here. And this appears to be double the constant. Now how does this help us? Let's go back and see what we can do with this here. Now, if you recall, I'm gonna go ahead and do this here. If you recall, 
this is what we had here, right? This is just the things we had here. Notice that when we do x plus c squared, we had double the constant here, and we have the constant squared. So in this case, this looks a lot like some sort of, well, we hope that it's just this unpacked, right? So it's going to be x minus some constant squared. When we, you know, when we distribute it and unpack it, we should end up with something that looks like that. Yeah, the constant's missing, but it's okay because the constant would have been absorbed into this plus 5 here. Same thing is going to occur here with a y squared because now we just have y. So perhaps we can try to figure out what's going on here. Note that we're going to try to match this with this here, right? Because we, we, our goal is to determine what the constant was. All right, so let's see. This x squared matches. Doesn't really help much. There's a minus 2x, and that should match with 2cx here. So with that in mind, we know that in this situation that minus 2x equals 2cx here, right? These two terms have to match because they're the only terms that have x's in them. Now, if we get rid of the x's, we're left with negative 2 equals 2c. So the constant was negative 1. Which means that this, if we look back at what we had here, the constant identity is negative 1 here. So this should be x plus negative 1, or x minus 1 squared. That is our eventual goal. right? We want to get x minus 1 squared out of this here. And indeed, if we were to square this, we would get x squared, a minus x, and a minus x. That gives us the minus 2x. But we also get a plus 1 here. So that plus 1 is the c squared here. That's negative 1 squared. And we end up with that. That's going to go here. Okay. In much the same way, we can do this with the y squared, right? Y squared, the y, so these should match up here. So again, the squared terms, all right, nothing help, no, no, no help. Uh, 6y equals 2cy here, so I'm just replacing the x's with y's. 2cy is equal to 6y, so 2c is equal to 6, and therefore it makes sense that our constant here is going to be a positive 3. So in this case, here we go back to this. Our constant is a positive 3 here, so I have a positive 3, okay? Now, again, we can consider what the con so remember, the last term is just constant squared, right? The last term is constant squared, and the constant is positive 3, so we're going to have a plus 9 here. So notice what's happening here is that we're basically undoing this sort of thing here, okay? Now, of course, we can go ahead and do this, but note that by doing this here, by introducing a plus 1 and a plus 9 here, we've unbalanced the equation. I've added 10 to one side. But this equation now needs to be balanced by adding the same thing to the other. So you have to make sure that when you're doing this, you're adding the same quantity to both sides. So when we have the plus 1 here and the plus 9 here, we have to do the same thing here, add the plus 1 plus 9 here. So now we can see that this actually leads us directly to this here, because now this goes back and gets us this, and then we get 5 plus 1 plus 9 is 15. So now it's pretty clear what's going on here. The center here is going to be the point 1 comma negative 3, and the radius is going to be radical 15 here, right? Now, if you're not, if this feels a little weird to you, consider this. Now that we have, oops, uh, this is radical 15 squared. If you're, if you feel a little squeamish about this, and you know, I understand that this is not necessarily the case here. Remember that we can always go backwards. So let's try it out. Let's go back to this here. X minus one squared plus y plus three squared equals 15. If I were to unpack everything, right, to throw everything out of the box, unwrap the boxes and take everything out, this we would just square again. That'd be x squared. Again, we have a minus 1x and another minus 1x. It's a minus 2x plus 1. Here we would have the same thing. y squared, 3y, and another 3y gives us 6y total. And we have a plus 9 is plus 15 here. So notice how this matches with this here, right? So now, one, another thing we can do is now we can subtract the 15 from both sides here and just gather all the terms. So this goes away, and we're left with x squared minus 2x plus y squared plus 6y is 1 plus 9 minus 15. 1 plus 9 is 10, 10 minus 15 is negative 5. And lo and behold, we end up with what we had before. So notice what's going on here. This is really what we're doing here. This completing the square bit of this, if you recall this from algebra one, this is just basically doing the same thing. We're just kind of running this in reverse. So determining what the radius and center of the circle is, we're rewrapping the boxes here after someone has so rudely unwrapped them and thrown everything everywhere. So we're just sort of rewrapping them here, okay? So in this case here, again, I suggest you watch the last five or six minutes again if you're not sure about this, just to make sure you see how this is going. Now we can do the same thing for another, let's look at a slightly more complex example. Determine the radius and center of this circle here. Yikes. So the first thing to note here is that all the constants here seem to be bigger, right? If we look at the last two examples here, we had this example here, we had a, a constant of 1 here, leading coefficient of 1, leading coefficient of 1, we call these monic quadru uh, polynomials here. Now, 
it doesn't seem to work out so well here. So one thing we can do is we can try to make it more mnemonic here by simply dividing everything by 4. So I'm going to divide everything by 4 here. I'm going to multiply, or in this case, multiply everything by 1 quarter here to get rid of all the, to make sure that the uh, leading coefficients are all 1. So of a quarter times 4, so this becomes x squared plus y squared minus 2y minus, sorry, minus 2x minus y minus 3 quarters is equal to 0. So now I'm going to add 3 quarters to both sides just to get rid of it. And then regroup the term so that it looks a little better. We get x squared minus 2x plus y squared minus y equals 3 quarters. All right, now we can do the same thing here. Let's consider what's going on. This, if you remember our goal, was to look like this here. Right? This is x squared minus 2x, so it's pretty clear here, right? This 2 is double the con this negative 2 here is double the constant we want, and that constant is negative 1. So this is x minus 1 squared, so if we were to square it again, we get x squared minus 2x, and then there'd be a plus 1 here. And of course, we have to remember to add the 1 to the other side. Now, in this case here, this one's a little different. It's going to be y minus something squared. Now, note that the coefficient here is a minus 1, which means that since that minus 1 is double the, co double the constant here, negative 1 is double some constant, that constant is negative 1 half here. So we actually get a negative 1 half like this. And in order to put this here, we have to, uh, we have to figure out what this is squared. The constant negative 1 half squared is just positive a quarter. So I add a positive quarter here. And I have to make sure to do that. So now 3 quarters plus 1 plus 1 quarter, where 3 quarters plus a quarter is 1, and 1 plus 1 is 2, so we end up with just 2. So now we can see here what's going on. The, rate, the center is pretty easy to read. The center is going to be 1 comma 1 half, and the radius, remember the radius is not 2, this is the radius squared, the radius is just radical 2 here.